holy, all of you. I give God glory and I give God honor. It's such a privilege to bring you the word of the Lord. The interesting thing that I started to say is that I believe it was just pure spiritual warfare, hallelujah, is what I've experienced. But I'm so glad that I serve a God who's bigger than any demon, any devil, amen? amen. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't have a word in writing for you this morning, so I have to totally. And I think it's a test for me as well to totally rely on the Lord. Uh, and I believe that it's interesting. I'm just saying. Now, God gave me the title for the word, and the title is Sally No More. I was going out of my garage, and I knew Pastor Shanika had asked me to bring the word today, and I said, well, Lord, I just finished the word, amen. And I said, well, well, what is the title for the next word you want me to bring? And as I took one step down into the garage, God dropped this in my spirit. He said, Sal, no more. Now, our scripture reference that's for today is going to be Joel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Very simple, just two scriptures. Amen. Amen. Blow the trumpet fancy. I'm going to give you the word. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand. You may be seated. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that we are going to blow the trumpet, God, and we know that you are going to return, Father. We know that you're on the way in the name of Jesus, God. Father God, our desire is that when you come, hallelujah, that we will be ready in the name of Jesus, God. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the word, God. I thank you for the word that you will provide today, God. All of you, God, and none of me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Because, God, your people need to hear your clarion call, God. Silent no more. God, it's time out for the church to be silent in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory and we give you honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've been paying any attention at all to the news, you know there's a lot of violence. There have been a lot of killings going on. There have been, even where our pastor is, there have been a lot of things going on, even in that country. So, you know, we've covered them in the blood of Jesus, that they would be safe while they're there, that they would return. But we know that there is a devil loose. But we also know that our God is bigger than any devil. But if you don't open your mouth, and declare the word of the Lord. Yes. The enemy is going to run rampant over our cities and our children. Yes. And it's not the world's fault. It's the church's fault. Yes. It's time for the church to rise up. Do what God called you to do. He called you to pray. Amen. 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 He called you to intercede. He called you to use your spiritual weapons that you have. Do you know what your weapons of your warfare are? Speak. Hallelujah. Speak. The word says they're not carnal. They're not a gun. They're not a chair. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Glory to God. It's not your words. That's going to cause anything to move or flee. It's the word of the Lord. It's only his word that will cause a demon to move. Glory to God. And this is just a plug right here for Cindy Trim and uh, Dr. Juanita Bynum. If you didn't hear her video, I recommend it highly. She talks about order things that we don't know even as a church. It was kind of deep, y'all, I'm telling you. But you need to hear it for yourself. 
The church has got to come into alignment with the word of the Lord. God wants us to be able to stand. That's what the word says. You know, when you've done all you can do, but you got to do all you can do. Have you done all you can do? You know, do you pray? Do you, do you encourage your brothers and your sisters? Do you go to them and say, how can I help you? Is there something that you need? That's what the church is all about. Back in the day, they would go from house to house. They would have meetings in, in the house. Amen? Amen? Lift each other up. They would even sell everything they had and put it together just so everybody could be fed, so that everybody could have everything that they need. There would be no lack. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But now, we go to church. Some people might come in, and they don't smell so good. You don't even want to sit beside them. I know of a ministry. They had a group of people. They would pick them up on the bus and bring them into the church and put them in one little area, like, y'all stay right there. But we want everybody to know that we have a homeless ministry. Really? But you don't want to mingle with them? Like they're not children of the Most High God? Because I'm sure you would have led them to the Lord. You're going to feed them, and then you're going to feed them spirit, physical food, and then you're going to give them some spiritual food. How dare the church exhort itself? That's not of God. Amen. Glory to God. We give him praise. We give him honor. I'm so glad we have a, a food pantry here where we can feed people who have a need. Amen. Glory to God. If they come in here and they don't have a need, right. guess what? That's on them. That's, right. That's not on us. But we're here if they have a need. Yeah. So that nobody in these United States should be hungry. No one in these United States should be homeless. Having traveled a few places out of the United States of America, we don't know what poor is. We're rich. We're a rich nation, I tell you. Glory to God. They don't know what toilet paper is. They don't know what a bathroom is. Flushing a toilet. Glory to God. We're a rich nation. How dare we thumb our nose up at people? But God wants us to love them because he's a God of love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants us. You, we can't be afraid to open our mouths to people. I have a friend. I will call her an acquaintance more than maybe a friend. And God laid this person on my heart. And I said, I don't know what's going on in their lives. But okay, God, if you put them on my heart, I'm praying. Yeah, yeah. I prayed for this person all weekend. Yeah. And I met them. And I said, what's going on? You have been so heavy on my heart. And they just smiled. I said, but if you need to talk, I'm available. All you can do. Sometimes just put yourself out there. Amen. I'm available. Yeah. But if they don't know you're available, they think you're standoffish, they may never approach you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I said, um, I'm still praying for you. Yeah. And I guess it was probably about two weeks later, this person, I saw them again, and they said to me, they said, I'm divorced. I wanted to say I really didn't know you were married. But I didn't say that. They said, I'm divorced. And you know how you hear things, okay? Y'all know, know how the whispers go. Right. And this person had an alternate lifestyle. And so I said to them, and it was like something rose up in me, okay? I'm just going to say it like that because I don't usually talk to people like this. And I said, well, let me ask you, was it a man or a woman that you got divorced from? Being real. Was it a man or was it a woman? This person told me it was a woman. And you know what I said? Well, I'm glad you were divorced. 
because that's why you've been so heavy on my heart. Because I care more about your soul than the fact that you just got the, I'm glad you got divorced. Now you can work on yourself. Amen. But you, we have to stop sugarcoating things when God opens the door for us to walk through it. You have to walk through the door. Take the opportunity. Because whether you believe it or not, sin is becoming more blatant. They're not hiding and sugarcoating anything. They're just wide open. But the church is timid. The church act like they can't talk. We can't say anything about that because y'all might get in trouble. Well, not that I'm not saying don't use wisdom in what you do. God wants us to use wisdom. I didn't say put somebody on blast. Amen. But ask God, how do you deal with the situation? How do you approach that person? If he wants you to approach the person. Because I'm telling you right now, if you're praying for them, sincerely praying for someone who you know is in error in their ways, I'm telling you God will open the door. God kept me in an office for years with cement walls. He would send people to my office. He protected me for years. People would come in. God would send them. I'd pray for them. Some of them even got filled with the Holy Ghost. No offense, it just happened. I'm, I'm retired now. I can talk a little bit. But it was God. Wasn't anything I tried to manufacture. Wasn't anything I tried to make up. God is saying, church, wake up. You have got to open your mouths. People are dying every day. And we go, oh, well, somebody else got killed. Oh, well, somebody else got shot. Oh, well, somebody had a real bad accident. Are you praying for them? I don't care if you're passing by the road. If I pass by the road, if I'm on the road, and I see a car beside the road, first thing out of my mouth, God help them. Send them some help. Send them somebody to help them fix their car. God, I, I pray that no one was injured in the accident. We've got to open our mouths because it's our mouths that God is going to hear. Not to send a man unless he's going to pray and ask God to save him. God doesn't have to hear not one thing he says until he does that. He will hear his children. He wants us to pray one for another. And sometimes things are uncomfortable. And I was, I was encouraged, though, by the scripture uh, uh, when Samuel God told Samuel, you all know Samuel in the Bible, prophet Samuel. God told him, he says, uh, I want you to go to Jesse's house. Yes. Because he had rejected Saul. And so he said, I want you to go to Jesse's house. And I want when you get there, he says, I want you to sacrifice with Jesse. And, and Samuel is saying, you want me to go to Jesse's house? Now, this is Samuel. Samuel, who every prayer he prayed, God answered it. He had that kind of power. He had that type of a relationship. Amen? Amen. He said, you want me, I'm paraphrasing, he said, you want me to go to Jesse's house and Saul's going to find out and he's going to kill me. You know, sound like a little fear to you? But guess what he did? God told him to do it and he did it. And God told him, and when you get there, then I'll tell you what else you need to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. So sometimes you got to do this. It's called stepping out yeah. in faith. You're not going to know everything God wants you to do. Because if I... <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. I give him praise, y'all. Because otherwise I'd have been in my house today. Because I had, had no idea. I'm just telling you. It's a, it's, he wants us to trust him. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you put all your trust in God, yeah. he'll move mountains for you. Yeah. He's longing and waiting for us to have a closer relationship with him. And it's not old folk. It's not middle-aged folk. It's young people. Yeah. He wants to have a relationship.
relationship with. Because if you look around, there are some old people that are not doing like they're supposed to be. But there are a lot of young people, they don't even go to church. Never been to church. Mama doesn't go to church. They don't know about Jesus. I think that's the only reason I'm working. Because God is always opening a door for you to encourage someone. People need that. They need to show you to show them the love of Jesus. God will give you praise. Hallelujah. And then not only that, opening your mouth, silent no more. Then we, he has an example in the Bible of David. Young boy. God using them young folk. Old folk, young folk. It does not matter. David was a young boy. You know, and he's going, his daddy says, go down there and take your brother some food. I'm paraphrasing, y'all. Go take your brother some food. You know, they're down there at the battlefield, you know. Go take them some food. David's excited about that because, you know, David likes adventure anyway. So David goes down to the battlefield and David knows it too. You know, David, what the world? What the world's going on down here? You know, he sees these great big Philistines and then he sees Israel over here all acting all a little cowardy, you know. And he says, what's going on? And he's not showing any fear. Would you show any fear if you defeated a bear? If you defeated a lion? If you know Jesus and you know he's on your side, David said, I went and got that bear because he took my sheep, had my sheep in, him, in his mouth, and I went and got my sheep and I killed him. Killed the bear and the lion. He, uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Defying our God? Are you kidding me? Do you, does he know who he's messing with? See, David had a relationship with the Lord. See, that's part of our problem. Okay. We got to get a closer relationship yeah. with the Lord yeah. so that we know what we trust him. Yeah. You know, even when they, you heard people say, I trust him even when I can't trace him. I trust him even when I don't have a clue what's going to happen next. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So David, of course, you know the story. Picks up those five smooth stones. And here comes old great big Goliath, nine feet, whatever tall. And, and David is just a probably, I don't know, five feet something boy. And they wanted to meet each other. And David is slinging. I can hear that sling. He's slinging that stone. And he goes a whoop. And so does Goliath go whoop. <laughs> Defeated. Do you think he really knew how he was going to defeat Goliath? He took a leap of faith. He didn't know if that that um that that stone, that small round stone, was going to kill that nine foot giant or not. But guess who knew? God knew, because God knew what He wanted David to do, because He knew what He had in store for David. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. See, he knew David was going to be king one day. Not right now. He's still serving Saul. But God knew. God knew that the Philistines needed to be defeated. See, we're so busy thinking our enemy is going to overtake us and defeat us. And what did God just show them? The enemies ran. David slew one man and the whole army ran. That's everything they had. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what your enemy will do when you get in line with God. When you do what he's telling you to do and going where he tells you to go. Cry aloud and spare not. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is the power of God to salvation and to all who believe. Glory to God. It's power in the name of Jesus. If you call on that name, I guarantee you the demons will flee. I heard Cindy Tripp say, she said, you know what? We're blaming a whole, first of all, we're blaming a lot of stuff on, the, on, on, on Satan that he didn't do. He has not visited you. 
you're not on the hierarchy enough for him to visit you. He visit people like Jesus. He visit people like Job. Okay? Glory to God. But the little demon that we get scared of, the ghost, the goblin, and you running around here celebrating Halloween. I'm sorry, it's the truth anyway. That's what's out. That's what they advertise, goose and the goblins and the ghosts. And then you be scared to go to sleep, some of us. Glory to God. It's the truth anyway. I saw the store yesterday. They already got their signs up. They getting ready to fill that store up with all that Halloween stuff. Do you realize that during that time of year, a whole lot of babies are killed because they're sacrificed? You realize that? We need to be praying. Pray and say, Lord, don't even let that store open. Should let the doors close up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful, but he wants us to rise up. He wants us to pray. He wants us to pull down strongholds because that's what they are. They're strongholds. The world is saying it's okay. The world is saying that type of lifestyle is okay. I'm going to tell you right now, God's word, it has not changed. Sin is sin. No sugar coating. No saying, I'm going to put some sugar up here. I'm going to cover this up. It's still sin. It's wrong. And it's time for the church to acknowledge that things are not right even in this country. The legislators, they can change what's going on. I tell you what can, though. Uh, Prayer. Because, see, they can't change anybody. But God can. And guess what? He's the only one who can. And he changes people from the inside out. That's why he tells us, you better be praying for your president. You better be praying for those in authority over you. I don't mean to say, oh, Lord, here he come again. Oh, Lord, that man, that man, that man. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, he crazy. Oh, Lord, Jesus, help the Lord. Yeah, yeah, let's not pray. Let's pray. He said, Lord, fix his heart. Lord, God, put some people around him to influence him. In a positive way, God, according to what your word says, God. I pray right now. I speak Jeremiah 29, 11 over him. Because, God, you know the plans that you have for our president. God, you know how you're going to use him. You know why you're going to use him. You know why he's in office. Because, God, hallelujah, just like I'm where I am, he knew that President Trump would be where he is. He ordained it. It's God who puts kings in places for whatever reason. Sometimes I think it was just to let to, for us to pray, yeah. to shake us up. Shake the whole country up. You don't like it? Oh, he's a bully. Well, guess what? Then pray the bullet spirit down. Glory to God and ask God to bless him. He could be a good president. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There's some good in everybody. I don't care who it is. There is some good because it's God's creation. I didn't say it was God's child because that's between them and God. But it's God's creation. And not everybody is God's child. There is a difference. Because if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not his. You're not his child. You're not in his family. Not yet, but we're believing God for you to come because as a church, we don't want to see anybody go to hell. Glory to God. So open your mouths. Don't shrink back and give God all the glory and all the honor. You know, in one another, one of the stories in the Bible, it talks about the leper. He's begging Jesus. But guess what? Has leprosy. Nobody wants to touch or be around anyone with leprosy. Well, I think the brother was mighty bold. Because he asked Jesus, he's begging Jesus to heal him. And you know how our compassionate 
loving Jesus is. He's not going to pass him by and not heal him. I know the people around him say, are you kidding me? You're going to touch him. You're going to lay your hand on him. They forgot who they were dealing with. Ha, huh, Jesus. He knows all about leprosy. He knows all about what you got on your body too. Glory to God. What's leprosy to him? Leprosy probably see Jesus come and say, I'm getting off of him right now. Don't you even touch him. I'm getting off of him right now. I'm coming down. You ain't got to touch me. Don't, don't. That's okay. That's okay. Because I see, I, need, I got to go find me another body. I got to go find me another body. So it's okay. I'm going. But can you send me over there? I, I need another body. Because you know spirits have to have a body. That's why don't be, don't be scared of those little demons. They ain't got no body. Who do to you? Nobody. They need a body. Otherwise, so don't give them yours. Renounce those things that you're doing if you're doing anything that you shouldn't do. Don't give them access. They're looking for access. They want you to have some old bad habits, things that are contrary and adverse to the word of the Lord. Don't give them access. All they need is a little bit of toenail. Yeah. You know, all they need is a little bit. Then, they, then the door gets wider and wider and wider. I learned even in your dreams. You know, they visit you in your dreams, yeah. trying, to, trying to get you to make covenant with them yeah. in your dreams. So when you get these old crazy dreams, ooh, what's God say? Girl, I was having, you got the kids in here? It's true anyway. I was having a relationship with somebody in my dream. It, I'll tell you straight up. It's from the pits of hell. It's a demon. It's a familiar spirit. Girl, I'm telling you, my mama came to see me in my dream. My daddy was there. Why on earth is the dead coming back to earth? It's called necromancy. It's adverse to the word of the Lord. Shut the door. And how do you shut the door? You say, I renounce that dream. I am not entered into covenant with this dream and any parts of it in the name of Jesus. God, my only covenant is with you. And I make covenant with you, God. And so if this dream is from you, hallelujah, then God, show me. Give me the interpretation of it so that I understand what you're saying to me. Don't be fooled by the trickery of the enemy because he's out to trick you yeah. by any means possible. Glory to God. Thank but it's time for the church to come up out of the dark ages. We got to get real. They know what the enemy know what's going on because see, he's got his heat turned up because he knows his time is short. So because he knows his time is short, then guess who that time is short? Our time is short. We don't have time to waste. We need to win as many souls to the kingdom as we can. Glory to God. Invite them to church. You know, your church sometimes is right where you are. It might be in the grocery store. On your job, it might be on the street. It's not so much which house they go to, is that they go to a house. Yeah. A house where the word of the living God yeah. is preached. Yeah. That's the credential right there. Yeah. Are they talking about Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. And are they serving him? Yeah. Teaching his word. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. We give him praise today. Yeah. He says, silence no more. Open your mouth. Not only did the lepers cry out and God answered him. Blind Bartimaeus did the same thing. He heard Jesus' voice. Glory to God. He wasn't afraid or ashamed to cry out. I bet you some of us, if you have something out there, like, I'm not even going out there. I'm too chicken to come up here. But blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus! Break through that too. Yeah, right, right, right. People gonna say, "Where you going? What 
you doing? Where are you going over there? I'm going over there because the Lord told me to go. Oh, that's why I'm going. I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to get what God has for me. Glory to God. You know, the, the, the Israelites in the Bible, with, um, they were murmuring. You know the story when they went over. God sent the, the uh, Moses sent the spies, the 12 spies, and, and 10 came back with a bad report. Two had the good report. I mean, they were throwing down with murmuring and complaining. So see, we have to watch our words because God was so upset with them. I don't think I'd ever seen this scripture before. And God told them, he said, whatever I'm, I'm going to do to you, as surely as I'm Lord, I'm going to do to you what, that, what you say. And that can be good or that can be bad. So you know what they said? Why in the world did he bring us out of Egypt? I wished we had died right here in the wilderness. They spoke their own demise. So God said, okay. That's what you say. That's what you want. And we know the story. And that's what happened. Watch what you say. Because God says, what you say. Not what Angie says for me. I need to be saying things for myself. Because right. the angel don't know what I got in me. Right. Angel doesn't know everything that I have been through. So I need to be asking God for myself. Right. God right. says, what you say, I'll make happen for you. Right. Glory right. to God. Glory. So watch what you say. Because, see, you might be asking God for some stuff that you really don't want. You might think you're just talking casually. See, there's no casual talk anymore. Time out for this casual talk. You think you can say anything, any kind of way. Curse if you want to, when you want to. Take a drink if you want to, when you want to. Tell anybody don't take no drink. Stay in my business. Stay in my lane. But we should do nothing in excess. Everything in moderation. Glory to God. They should have a shot to the quick of the people. But God wants you to be drunk on his wine. The wine, the fruit of the Holy Ghost. He said, you know, the more you drink, you know how uh, in the natural, the more a person gets inebriated, the more they drink, you can about tell, can't you? Can't you tell? I mean, come on, they've been really drinking, right? They are changed because before they started to drink, they were able to do all this. But after they start to drink, get a little wobbly because they really into whatever it is they consume. Well, that's how he wants you to be in him. He wants you to be so intoxicated with the Holy Ghost because when you're intoxicated with the Holy Ghost, oh, he changes you. Oh, he moves you. Your speech changes. Your desires changes. Glory to God. Get drunk on the new wax. The wine of the Holy Ghost. He'll change your speech. He'll change your very life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise and we give you honor. Hallelujah. So God says, this is what happened. Sally, no more. Don't let anybody, don't let anything Hold you back. No fear. That's not a God. And if you feel a little intimidation, all you got to do is say, God, help me. Ha -ha. Oh, because he is your ever-present help. He wants to help you. Help me, Lord. I'm feeling a little uneasy. But God, I know you got it. I sat beside the bed this morning, and I had this book, and I was like, Threw my hands in the air, and I heard this still small voice, and he said, I got you. I'm with you. You know what I did to this book? Just like they did in the temple. Jesus shut the book. I shut the book. And you didn't see me open this book pretty much until I got ready to get up here. Because I refused to be intimidated. Because I told God, these are your people. 
These are your people, God. Yes, yes. And you know what you want them to hear. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So I give him glory. Yes. I give him honor. Yes. So I'm going to close. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. something in you. He's always teaching us. Always. Sometimes, you know, we, we get ahead of ourselves or ahead of him. We need to do this no more. Slow down. Take a breather and wait on him. And I'm guilty. I'm talking to myself. Oh, glory to God. Tell I'm testing. I came in this morning and I had my sister and I said, can you do the communion? Get the communion ready for me. I came in, I didn't see it. And I was reaching to God. Maybe she's not here. Hey, Jim, you go, Jim. She said, oh, I did it. But I didn't see it. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't see it. Sometimes when you don't see some things, you start jumping to conclusions. The enemy starts feeding you negative stuff. Uh-huh. She took what she told me she was going to do. Bless the Lord. Thank you, my sister. I think God told me to do that. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If there's anyone house today. I don't take things for granted. If there's anyone in the house today who does not know the Lord in the pardoning of their sins. The altar is open. You may come up. We have someone who will pray with you. That's number one. Number two, if you feel like you've backslid, if you feel like you're not where, you want to be or where you should be. The enemy is always beating you up over something. You say, God, I, I just, not where I want to be in you. I just need someone to stay in an agreement with me. Pray with me. And number three, if you would like prayer for any reason, doesn't matter what it is, and you need someone to stay in an agreement with you. Maybe you're going through something. Maybe you're not going through anything. People get the misnomer. Well, if I go to the altar, they think something wrong with me. Me, I used to run to the altar. I turned the altar down. Because you know who I wanted at the altar? Jesus. I love going to the altar. I can't wait to get to the new church. Because we got a real altar. Amen. You know, the built up altar. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I love the altar. I don't care what anybody says about me. It's not about them. It's about me and him. And I give him all the glory and honor. I love to get drunk in Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But if you'd like prayer for any reason, we'd love to agree with you. As long as it's in keeping with the word of the Lord, we'll stand in agreement with you. In agreement with you. So you can come now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pandara kore ne sinto ro ma shandara kore ne si. Hora ma shandara kora ba selekaya. Haya no ro mo shandara bosa. Bihan do ro kora ba kai. Haya no ya ba Jesus. We give you glory, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this time that we have had with you. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your word. God, I bless the holy name of Jesus. God, help your church. Help us, God. Help us to go where you want us to go and to represent you like you want to be represented. God, nothing holding back. God, we're believing you for 30 plus thousand dollars by the 15th of August because that's nothing to you. You can tell us where to go get it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. You own it all anyway. All the silver and all the gold, all the cattle, all the hills that the cattle graze on. It all belongs to you. Ha <laughs> ha. We give you glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We believe we have heard from you. Hallelujah. We believe that that church is ours. And so we claim it. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Lokorobasiti. Not so we can say we have a church building, but because, God, we believe more people will come into your kingdom in the name of Jesus, God. We believe, Father, that we can make a difference in that community in the name of Jesus. So, God, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way in our pastors in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. There's just nothing like you. You're awesome in every way. And we serve a risen Savior who loves his people. Glory to God. I say money coming. Money coming. From the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. God, we call it in. We call it in, Lord. We call it in, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name, the matchless name of Jesus. God, we call it in. We call it in, Father. We call it in God. Reshoro shakata, brosha koro masalaka, reshoro koro manjaka, hamaro koro maseleke ite, reshoro bo shandaka. Ha, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We bless your name. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you in this place. Roko roman shala koro besiti, bronko basa koro bo shandara bahaya. Thank you, God. You bind up everything.